Hey everyone, Snoo here again, and we got a new video. Today is an all day Path of Exile kind of day. I got a hundred maps here I'm gonna run on the promenade. You guys might not have been expecting for me to do promenade again, but a couple of you seemed interested in the possibility of running the cemetery farm uh, on promenade instead of on cemetery, and it is something I actually tested. I uh, didn't give it a whole lot of testing, uh, but I was intrigued by it. I actually earned some decent currency, if I recall correctly. It was something like 12 or 13x an hour uh, when I was doing it. So this would have been kind of like doing the the cemetery farm, but forcing Deli Mirrors on it on top of it. So instead of running Hunted Traders, I'd run Deli Mirror as a sextant. And try to get the maps done in three or four minutes flat. It's kind of impossible to do it that fast. Uh, but four to five minutes uh, map runs, uh, full promenade mi mirror clears with, uh, you know, not very many mechanics, no Alva, no Abyss, no, no highly time-consuming mechanics on there. It's kind of a lot of fun, honestly, and a lot of patient cards come out of it uh, thanks to, again, the 500% increased quantity uh, modifier. Here, so actually, I do kind of like this uh, strategy uh, for the sake of target farming patient cards as opposed to six links. So, you know, the whole annoying in and out of the hideout for six links thing, uh, putting that in the rear view mirror. And we're going to go for uh, primarily patient cards uh, as well as just kind of general, general stuff. Uh, quick update on the gear. Hey, 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 hey. Uh, I must warn you, this is not for the faint of heart, what you're about to see. This is the last major upgrade for me this season. I think this was roughly an, if I, if I remember correctly, like an 18% overall damage increase, as well as uh, 20 additional maximum life. And holy cow, this, um, this quiver is, is an absolute monster. Uh, faint of heart, I mentioned that because you are looking at the benchcraft here. It says plus 35 lightning resistant on a mirrored item. <laughs> I had to do it. <laughs> I didn't really have a choice because uh, I, I I have to have lightning res. Look. Look at my lightning res. <laughs> it's exactly 76 at the cap. Um, ju it's just the way I set up my gear. And it's towards the end of the season. So there's nothing else that I'm going to really... I can't really think of another option where I get that lightning res somewhere else. Again, on a magic find hybrid character. Obviously, if I were to substitute, I don't know, my gloves or something for a uh, generic rare, I, I could have dealt with that, but I don't plan to do that. So, it is what it is. So, I know it's like nails on a chalkboard to look at this <laughs> with the lightning res. Uh, but, hey, you know, some, you, you can't have your cake and eat it too every time, right? Plus, I don't really need 12, what is it, 12 uh, attack speed? I don't really care about that. I, I look, look how fast I attack already. Yeah, do, do I really need 12 additional attack speed? <laughs> this is out of combat before any headhunter buffs. Like, no. Uh, plenty of attack speed already. Yeah, so let's uh, take a look at this big farm here we got. We are running... Of course, the gloom shine elevated. I'm still getting this sextant for cheap. I still have like 30 of these sextants left over. And I think I budgeted about 50 chaos per uh, on these. And then we got uh, Elevated Strongbox Rare. Now, this sextant, for some reason, was getting wildly expensive for a while. It has now finally come back down to about 100 chaos a piece. Uh, so that's how much I budgeted in on this one. Uh, for this farm, getting that extra Strongbox actually does have uh, some impact for the sake of helping extend the mirror by opening one more Strongbox than you would have otherwise. Uh, it, it does have a fair bit more meaning on this farm than uh, it does on Cemetery. And then, of course, we have a Enraged Strongbox one. It's too expensive at the elevated level. So this is, I think, 20 chaos a piece on uh, this compass here. And then Delhi Mirrors, I paid about 80 chaos a piece for those. And the majority of what you see here on the Exalt on the left, that comprises of all the compass expenses, as well as five chaos per map uh, for uh, running beyond on the map device. There are a hundred maps here. This is going to be a hundred maps of Promenade. I think only like two of these map e maps even have Beyond on them. So I'm, I'm not focusing on the map rolls. I just made sure they didn't have buffs expire 70% faster. And like they don't have Elemental Reflect. So those are two rolls that I made sure are not on here. But basically everything else is uh, is on there. 
Yeah, so it's pretty straightforward. It's basically just my cemetery farm uh, with, with the same exact scarabs that I've been running. You know, the, the gilded scarabs are a little too expensive, but ambush is still fine, sitting pretty at around 10 chaos apiece. And I got some enhanced supports here, which I will be leveling. I, I should be able to get at least through two full rounds here. So at the very end, when we tally the results, we'll see if I can uh, corrupt any of these up to four. I'll kind of add those in. Um, not to the floor, of course, but but the floor and the what I earn is probably going to be about the same, unless I get some something crazy like a headhunter uh, drop, which could happen because I see gobs and gobs of unique belts every map. So I'm going to kind of quickly show you guys here what the total is. Going to reset the filter, not the filter, the uh, excellence here. And you can see it's about uh, 39 and a half. Okay, 39 and a half exalts uh, invested. It's kind of a lot, but you know, it's 100 maps, so it's a lot of maps. Uh, like I said, this is an all day Path of Exile kind of day. I'm going to run 50 maps, start straight through them, I'm going to get some lunch, uh, relax my eyes a bit, come back and run 50 more maps in the afternoon or the evening, and we'll get this video out real quick. I, I have a. a other interesting video ideas uh, for the end of the season I think there will be one more major farming um, video or series of videos I'm gonna make and I did mention it before I I'm thinking what I might do is I, I might uh, I might like see how fast I can farm a full mirror on the cemetery farm and this will be after this video and because there's something I want to do is I uh, there's still there's still kind of one major potential upgrade I could get, and that would be a juicy double corrupt on a headhunter. Uh, that would be so. If I could farm a mirror, for example, I could get to double corrupt like eight headhunters or something, and probably you know have a decent chance of getting something good uh, there if I did that. Yeah. So that's kind of uh, my plan, and then of course uh, beyond that, I'm definitely going to be looking at uh, planning for the next season. We did just get the announcement that we're about three and a half weeks. Three or three, I guess about three weeks away from the season. Uh, I do have a major vacation. This is so, such a sad thing. I got... <laughs> in Japan, where I live, we have three major vacations throughout the year. And one of them, one of them is coming up uh, the week before the new season. Yeah, I'm, I'm so tilted at it. <laughs> it's called Golden Week. You can look it up. Golden Week, it's about a nine-day vacation uh, for me. And it takes place at the very beginning of May. So it starts, it basically starts on like April 29th through like May 9th or May 8th or something like that. And uh, <laughs> I guess I'll, I'll get ample time to prepare for the next season. You know, we'll, I don't even know if we'll have the patch notes by then actually. Obviously I'll do some other things. Man oh man do I wish I could have uh, had that vacation um, at the start of the season. I did uh, sort of take a shot in the dark and blindly request off uh, the first day of the season. If it did indeed drop on the 13th of May, it did. So I, I'm lucky there. I will, I will get at least one full day off on the first day of the season. Um, I, I really want to see what I'm capable of. I, I think I could get like a headhunter pretty easily in the first week if, if I actually had a full week off. But oh well. Uh, anyway. That's a side point. Let's get started in this video with this farm here. I'm gonna say so there you see 39 and a half. I'm gonna go back to this screen here. Yeah, I, I don't think there's a whole lot more to say on it. I'm gonna reset my excellence. So we'll get a proper look at this. And again, uh, I'll have to time these map runs, I think. Well, I'll just see how much time uh, it took after I started this. Between the start of the first 50, the first map, and the 50th map, we'll see how much time passed, and we'll kind of get a good sense of uh, how long it takes to do each one. Okay, so I am resetting it now. Gotta pull these out. 39 and a half, that's the magic number. Kind of throw these back in here. We'll definitely uh, put those in. I really don't know how fast I'm going to level these. I think I'm only going to get through two full rounds, to be honest. It's hard to say. Okay, we'll put those there. 
And actually, no. no. I'm run one of my juicier maps. One of the very few Beyond maps I have on here, just to make it fun for the highlight. I'm not running Alva. We got Beyond on there. And we got our sextants in already. Good to go. Let's do this. Okay, I take one more snapshot and... Yeah, so here's the plan. This is a little bit uh, unique here. So I'm basically only... The only mechanic I'm gonna do is strong box and shrines it's the only thing now you see i'm already pushing the mirror for it, but th there are certain mechanics in this game that uh freeze the mirror and make it so you can't progress further i uh, see i lost my golem there and then there are certain mechanics that extend the mirror which means like i can keep forcing it forward even if i run insanely fast like kind of power through through it here You'll notice I'm also not full clearing or looting everything. Now, see, there's the front end of the mirror, but watch this. It's, it's going to extend. See, it extended again. It's very fast, very quickly extending. It seems that once you once you bridge past the front end of the mirror, you can really easily force it to keep going. From what I found is the further along you go, the, the, the closer you get to the edge of the fog, so to speak. The well, I'm like right there on the line. Uh, the, fir the closer you get to the edge of the fog, the more likely it is to extend all the way through. So here's the end of the map. Oh, uh, this is actually stupid. So I messed up there. I should not have hit that breach because the breach actually pauses the mirror. And so I'm going to be a little bit stuck here. Uh, I mean, I guess it's fine. You know, I can kind of show you how this happens. Uh, I might not be able to kind of get to the very end of the map. I, I don't know if it's going to... Okay, yeah. I, I, think it I think it does actually continue going forward. Uh, but once the breach drops, like right now, I get like a, an extra additional pause timer uh, sort of allotted to me. Additional time. So I, I think breaches simultaneously extend the mirror while you're, uh, you know, wh while you're in it. And then it also pauses the mirror when it finishes. So... In, in the particular case where I trigger a breach and then I run away from it while it spawns, the mirror is still progressing. But the second that breach is done, it will it will have a pause timer. So I basically timed this perfectly, essentially. I'm, I'm basically sitting here on maximum uh, mirror time. And you're going to see I'll be able to come back here. You'll notice that uh, I'm still not really focused on killing everything. But hey, guess what? I, I'm now uh, going along the parts of the map that I didn't clear before. So there was, uh, you know, the upper level sections of the map I'm clearing now. There's still some harbingers and a few monsters I'm not clearing. I'm not too worried about that. So I got almost all the way to the beginning of the map. Not bad. My goal is to try to actually e extend the mirror, and this has been done through a lot of testing, to extend the mirror all the way through to the very end so I can actually get a full-blown clear on it. If I can. 138 simulacrum splinters. Not too bad. I mean, I've only been in this map for like... <laughs> Two minutes flat here so i also did get a speed shrine no i didn't get a speed shrine actually moving quite fast uh, i think i got lucky on the uh, headhunter buffs okay and so now i am looting so i'm going back forward through the map again i kind of call this there back Again, there, back again, and there again, I guess. Like, you know, the the Hobbit, Lord of the Rings, or whatever. There and back again. It's like there, back, and there again, I guess, is what this is. Uh, probably not really worth doing this, but oh well. It's going to give me 12 Headhunter buffs, so I guess I'll go ahead and do it. Make me run fast for a second. So yeah. Anyway, uh, it would appear that uh, that the shrines, or at the very least, the strong box, give me extra time uh, for the mirror, but do not actually pause the mirror. So basically, that makes it extend uh, the extend, extends the timer on the back end, but still allows it to push forward. 
which is the best case scenario. And, and some some things don't do that. Now, uh, I know for almost absolute fact that uh, Arch Nemesis doing that, uh, it, it works like Essence, which uh, just pauses the mirror for, for briefly, like five or ten seconds after you complete it. So if you can complete an Arch Nemesis in less than five seconds, which I can, uh, that is actually worth doing uh, to help extend the mirror. Usually I prefer to just pick up, I don't know, some gargantuan or something while that. So here we go. We're basically done with this map and we got a few patient cards. Nothing too crazy. Uh, how many patient cards? Two? Oh, the academic is worth something here, isn't it? Uh, yeah, a patient... Patient two, yeah, okay, two nurse, or two patient cards, and a flesh craft as well. Okay, so cool. All right, so here we go. We begin. Uh, I got 138 splinters. Uh, there is almost no chance that I'm gonna get 300 simulacrum splinters. There's basically no chance. But if you kind of do the math, especially if you recognize just how many extra monsters are put on the map from doing a Delhi mirror. It's absolutely worth it, even at just like mild levels of juice. Uh, as long as long as you don't, you know, straight up fail uh, a delirium map, even occasionally, really, you're you're totally gonna make good on it. There was one more. Oh, nice uh, random exalt there from a delirium monster. There is one more major uh, interesting thing I did here. I have dropped. Endless Munitions. Endless Munitions is the Deadeye Ascendancy Point for two more projectiles, and I picked up Tailwind instead, Gathering Winds. Uh, kind of an interesting uh, decision. I had to really think hard, long and hard about that one. Failing at clicking shrines here. Sometimes happens. <laughs> so, originally I thought that Headhunter buffs uh, increased your uh, action speed. I, I thought that's what they did. I, I know I, at one time I looked at all the di various different headhunter buffs that exist in the game and I found, I, I very quickly saw that one of them, at least one of them, increases your action speed. But when I actually look, look at my buffs and, and see them play out in, in the game, it would it would have seemed that the vast majority of headhunter buffs actually it just increase your raw movement speed uh, and attack speeds, which means action speed. You know, most people already know this, but action speed is king. You know, action speed really matters a lot, which is one major reason why I love the shrines uh, because it is an enormous source of action speed, especially if you get that acceleration shrine, major shrine. Uh, but also. Uh, Tailwind, obviously, is it's an action speed. It's only 8% by default, but with 10 stacks of Gathering Winds, it, it is a 20% buff, and for most of the run that I do, especially when I don't have an Acceleration Shrine, uh, that will be my only source of action speed increase, which which uh, is it, it's total its own modifier. So, so when I start getting Headhunter buffs to increase my speed, and it, it will say on there, like I'm running at like... 1300% increased movement speed or something. That 20% more action speed is nuts. <laughs> that is like so much additional movement speed. And, you know, it, it doesn't make a huge impact outside of combat. Like, I, I have like 105% increased movement speed outside of combat, which is kind of a lot, but I guess, you know, it's only effectively like 8 or 9% more movement speed outside of combat, but there, certainly like the moment I get in combat, the moment I get any kind of headhunter buffs or whatever, it, it really it does matter quite a bit. Oh, that was a bad Shroud Walker thing. Okay, I'm just gonna open that one more time. I got some other kind of red star down there. I'm not even sure what it is. I'm not even gonna try to kill the Harbinger because I want them come. I want them to be alive when I come back through. I do want there to be some monsters alive <laughs> when I come back through. That way, I can continue reaping headhunter buffs uh, even when I'm in the like the loot phase. It will be meaningful for me. 
see this map is quite a bit uh, bigger than the others. And once again, we just couldn't quite make it all the way back. S sometimes I do honestly get back here and the mirror still hasn't even really started to move yet. Pretty bloody awesome. So 160 uh, Simulacrum Splinters there. Not too bad. You can see I'm moving quite fast, but here, so we're so right here. I'm so glad those monsters are there because they're they're helping feed me uh, some headhunter buffs. Just <laughs> the fact that strong box can open again is really nice as well. Uh, I recognize that I'm not killing everything. I think it's actually more important that I make use of you know the hyper speed buffs that I have when I have them. Really glad when there's a king harbinger that spawns because that way I can go. When I do the there, back, and there again strategy, oh, Sacred Orb, uh, the King Harbinger will still be alive. Oh, I'll test that later, I guess. My mana is so the King Harbinger will still be alive, and he can feed me a whole bunch of more uh, buffs again. One thing that's very important with this strategy is having an extremely strict loot filter. And now, this is the first time in the map that I'm basically just running at default movement speed. So I, I finally got to a point where I just cannot maintain any more headhunter buffs. And yeah, that's it. I never did get an acceleration shrine, which is really sad. I, I feel like every map I have, you know, there's three shrines that spawn. Basically five random shrine effects every map at least. And I feel like um, there's, I don't know, a 30% chance or so that I might get an acceleration shrine, which a major acceleration shrine is going to reduce my total clear time from like, you know, five minutes on the high end to like four minutes on the high end. It absolutely saves at least 20% of the run time. Don't see any breaches. Double Exalted Orb. It's got two raw exalts off of one Harbinger. I think that really is like one in a million kind of thing. I'm not supposed to get double exalt raw exalt. Wow. a breach, losing no time in the deli. Look at all that pretty loot! Mm. Should probably uh, finish it down there. Up. Acceleration shine. What it does for me. Action speed modifier 42%. That is from Gathering Winds. 20% from Gathering Winds, Tailwind, and 22% from a lesser action speed shrine. <laughs> of course, if I got a major action speed shrine, then it's 120. No, no, 112%. Now, at the very beginning of the map, Delhi Mirror is just now expiring. Whoops, just kidding, not expiring. Actually, I wanted to expire. Oh, there it is, okay. 155 and a Delhi Orb. Pretty standard. Pretty standard results. Pick up a whole bunch of stuff. Ooh, 
How many burial medallions did I get? Whoa. That guy was making some havoc. Thirteen burial medallions. That's a little bit lucky. A little bit. I feel like ten is kind of average. Wow, another. This is why you go shrines right here. Now I'm looting so much faster. So nice. Pretty sure I just killed a monster with the shroud walker. But everything's dead. I haven't gotten any really good uh, cluster jewels yet. <clears throat> Is that the boss? I guess that was the boss. I'm sitting here dying slowly to desecrate. <laughs> So, uh, what did you purchase with all those, uh, Cemetery Brothers stashes? Mm, I'm sure you made a purchase of some kind. Bought yourself a new pony. On the portal, still delirium active. Can I get back to that blight in time? Yes. Oh, plenty of time. It's like super long. Not every day I get to do a free blight in a delirium mirror. Winged Harbinger Scarab? It just got one of those last map. What are the chances of that? Wild. I mean, last map was the first winged harbinger scarab I've seen this league. <laughs> so, and then I got a second one again. Oh my God, it's like I'm, I probably had a better chance of finding a mage blood than finding back-to-back -back winged harbinger scarabs. That is just. That is just ridiculous. Alright, we're gonna call this mirror done. Let's see how much I got. Yeah, that 
Blight was in the very early part of the map, so not all that valuable. I'd say that's not too bad. I'm not up to that just yet. Oh my god, zero chaos res on this crazy. I like 100% crit, but I'd rather have my Gloom Shrine. Oh my god, it's the very end of the map again. Ha! Ah, got it! So fun. It's like, it's, it's almost like I'm playing Super Mario Brother and I just got the star power. That's what, that's what it feels like. You know, the game would be boring if I had star power, like the entire, the entirety of the game. That wouldn't be very exciting, right? That was a little risky. Let's see how fast I kill this. 100% delirium metamorph. Grr, dead. <laughs> is that enough uh, damage? That, my friends, is the power of Fizz to Element Conversion Headhunter with 70 Headhunter buffs. And just completely deleting stuff. So if I had had like zero headhunter buffs at that moment, I would not have even been able to kill that guy. <laughs> like I would have, it would have taken me like a full minute to kill him. That's just how insane the scaling is on uh, Biz to Element Conversion Headhunter playstyle. <laughs> stupid, so stupid. Uh, and that's why I went for the Biz Conversion bow that. Math crafted, not the other one. A lot of people went for the elemental one. I mean, he did make it first, so. No, no, the, it, no not the breach. Light. Light. I wonder if it's even really worth doing this. I guess so, because. I don't even... I would not even be doing this in the cemetery, though. Ah! Oh, 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 oh. I saw that cutting it a little bit close. That was pretty funny. Now watch this amazing loot, guys. This amazing loot is going to come out of here. See all this amazing loot? Yeah. I got one dying anguish for that. That's it. That's why, I, I, it's just, <laughs> they really need to buff. Like, I, I think they like severely nerfed the loot explosion. I think that's one secret nerf they did to blight. The loot explosion from the end, it's nothing now. It's nothing. Granted, my loot filter is very tight, but I mean, I still like, I just find like nothing every single time getting old. Two, two, two. And I didn't get this breach at all. Failed. Failed the map. Failed the map. Didn't get all the encounters. Failed it. Do over. I need to do over. I definitely skipped a few uh... <laughs> Breach monsters on the right there too. Another not exalted orb. Mm. I get way more loot from strong boxes than one strong box is gonna give me far more loot than an entire blight. That's how skewed <laughs> the game balance is right now. Like, it's, it's actually very rare where I open a strong box and I don't see any loot from it. Like, not from the monsters, not from the from the box itself. But what's up with that? I, I am running Sextant, but, like, even if I wasn't running Sextant, I'd still see loot very often. 
Watch my health. Chaos Red. Oh, it disappeared. Oh, I was gonna play around with that. Almost forgot to finish this recipe. Ah! Help me. And that time I got an, an organ. Last time I didn't. For another pretty good map. Aegisaur again. Second one. With no covetous shrine this time. Straight up luck. They, they spawned and immediately the interface was there. There was no gloom shrine, by the way. I need to complete this before the breach expires. Hey, hey. Made it. I did it. Do it again. I need to loot while I wait on a breach to spawn and I do a ritual while looting. I'm doing three things at once here. Look at that, it's a beautiful thing. Another that's how you do it moment. Helps when you got major uh, speed shrine, obviously. <laughs> when you're moving, you know, 132% increased action speed. Oh, we're at the beginning of the map again. And the delirium is still going on. But I don't really want it to go on anymore, so we're going to stop it. 200. Hey, I finally got some delirium orbs. Good ones, too. Got it dry there for a bit. See an extra shrine. Wow. Wow, lots of quantity on this map. Oh my god. More. More quantity. More quantity. Probably almost got two screaming uh, influence invitations there. What? This is the fourth quantity altar I've gotten. Holy balls. That is wacky good. We're gonna do another one of these. That much quantity. <laughs> do the drops right there look like Captain America's shield? <laughs> look at the mini map up here. I'll show you guys this in a second here. <laughs> Patient card. Look at the mini map. See the mini map? It's Captain America's shield. <laughs> what? Or uh, maybe if the ring was blue, I think. If the ring was blue. Uh, <laughs> I don't want to pick up the loot because it's Captain America's shield. Man, what? <laughs> Nuts. going on. God. I 
Yeah, that's, uh... Died way too fast there. <laughs> I got absolutely destroyed. Still got the deli. Lost that breach, though. I got a little confused with what I was supposed to click. It's a double raw exalted or about the strong box. It seemed like that. Actually, no, that was not out of the strong box. That was off a monster. It spawned from the strong box via 500% increased quantity modifier and then an altar that gave me around 15% chance to duplicate currency dropped. Well, there you go. It all comes together. Welcome back, folks. It's time for the final tally of the 100 map semi juicing promenade farm, like the cemetery farm. One thing, quick thing, I forgot to explain in the opening is my Atlas passives. Now, I, I have said in the beginning of this farm, as well as throughout, uh, that I'm basically running the, my go to most lucrative cemetery farm, which is the most lucrative farm I've found this entire season. And I'm running it in the promenade, dumping the hunted trader sextant in lieu of a delirium mirror sextant, which means all I did is I flipped this delirium wheel on its head. So instead of giving me a chance for delirium mirrors, it's now, you know, improving the uh, the fog, basically. Since, the fog, since it's guaranteed, I'd rather have more no nodes on the, the fog. Uh, delay and as well as increasing it further uh, from the mirror getting more value. I averaged around 150 to 200 simulacrum splinters um, per run for ones that I didn't mess up. I did mess up a few maps. I actually had some major technical difficulties and lost effectively two maps which uh, for the sake of the time anyway I, I discounted myself a little bit uh, there. Speaking of time, uh, my map run times did fluctuate quite a bit. Um, in the end, I figured out that the way I like to run the maps and my most successful, most efficient run speed was kind of doing it the same way I did the mega juicing portion of the promenade video where I split it into three phases. Phase one, I kind of tried to start the mirror casually clear and loot on the go. Then uh, eventually somewhere around a quarter to a third of the way through the map, I just start picking up all the shrines. Uh, the delirium gets too heavy uh, to risk not uh, snowballing the headhunter buffs. So I just kind of hit hit the tail and run to the end of the boss, clear backwards uh, to the point in which I was no longer picking up loot and get in and out that way. That was taking me on average around four to five minutes per run. But up until the point where I started doing that, which was pretty late in the session, uh, it was about five to six minutes per run, uh, sometimes over six minutes, uh, depending on how things were going. Um, so yeah, let's uh, let's go dive in to the results here. I gotta pull you down to my desktop. Oh, you're already there, that's right. And you can see here, I got the notepad, everything open, excellent. All right, we'll take one last look at the snapshot again, and I decided to calculate this at around uh, nine and a half hours uh, per run. If we do that, if we do uh, 98, 9.5 times 60 divided by 98, because I did about 98. That's about 
5.8 minutes per run. I think that's perfectly reasonable. That was about what I was running. And again, I'm not counting 100 maps because I, I, this, I will advertise this as 100 maps, but uh, whereas I did open 100 maps, I wasn't even able to do one of them, and the other was basically canceled out really quickly too because of uh, internet issues. So it is what it is. You do a 100 map session, sometimes you have technical difficulties. <laughs> Uh, but uh, honestly, I usually don't actually. Uh, you can see 162.8x. Uh, that's what's in here currently. So if you recall at the beginning of the video, I invested 39.5x and uh, the gross is right here. This does not include uh, log books. I do have one. This does not include um, blueprints, of course, which I have many uh, unusual gem blueprints. This does not include a few other things. Uh, I do have cluster jewels in here. I have um, the gems I leveled uh, sitting here on standby. Standby here, uh, breach breach rings as well. Uh, I do generally kind of want to count this stuff, but um, you know this, this is just going to be kind of extra on top. Uh, I will count it towards the ultimate tally, but kind of give you guys show you guys what the floor is. Uh, That's how I usually do. You know, X certain X to. <laughs> the amount I actually made somewhere in that range at this speed of course uh, and it is very fast you know five to six minutes per run uh, doing this uh, was a whole lot of fun uh, I don't recommend it unless you have an incredibly <laughs> fast character uh, to do it because you know it, it is a very 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 momentum driven strategy it is much easier going than the other one where I had to like constantly like loot way more stuff and then go out of the the map come back in get the six links you know do that three or four five times per map it's kind of annoying uh so i did in in a sense enjoy this uh, farm a bit more but it was still super high octane fast and a bit rippy in some cases uh, i lost uh, i think three animate guardians this time in 100 maps um yeah wish i could do better but I, i'm still learning on how to make that guy a little bit more uh easier to survive so uh in the excellence here some brilliant person a while back suggested that i should put these in total value top down thanks for the tip man that, that's a good idea so that's what i'm doing here uh i did mention patient card was the primary farm and guess what that's what i found the most of exalted orbs i found 23 i can't remember off the top of my head how many I found uh, on the 50 maps and the other one, but it should have been, <laughs> I should have found as many, if not more, Exalted Orbs in that 50 map session with the extra two layers of Beyond than this one, because this one only have one layer of Beyond, or two layers of Beyond, the Atlas, as well as the Bench, um, Kyrick Bench uh, craft into the map. Uh, yeah, so 23 raw Exalt, probably two of those is Exalted Shards, maybe three. I got very lucky early on. I found tons of exalts early on. I got I got multiple double exalt drops. I even got a double exalt drop from a harbinger, which <laughs> I'm not really sure how that happened. That, that could either been uh, have been two separate instances of the exalted shard com converting over to exalted orb, or maybe it was exalted shard converting to exalted orb combined with percent chance. For currency items to be duplicated alter effect uh although I, I i wasn't aware of that working on harbinger um theoretically it could though yeah though so that's the story on exalted orbs uh, simulacrum 48 here they've been going up in value a tiny bit but yeah still basically less than half an exalt awaken sextants yeah found a whole frick ton of those uh more than i expected Mainly from operative strong boxes. They, they drop like crazy from there. Uh, you see a lot of burial medallions. I did quite a few of the recipe. Temporal bubble, mirror image. Sorry, temporal bubble, tree and horde, mirror image, and rejuvenation. Or rejuvenating. Uh, it's very, very good to do. Some divine orbs from the strong boxes only, basically. Because I was not running uh, unique monsters drop corrupted items. Uh, quite a few chaos orbs, and then we just kind of uh, you go down from there. Uh, cemetery maps. I am counting the maps. Look, uh, th there's a lot of maps taking up space here. They're not worth much. One or two chaos. I mean, wh what does it say the cemetery maps are worth two chaos? 
These things are worth more than two chaos to me. <laughs> I mean, I don't really have to buy them, but I mean, just just for the sake of uh, having a bun a bunch to roll or whatever, they're they're worth a lot uh, in my opinion. And I sell these maps. Uh, I have so in case somebody's wondering, I sell maps constantly. I don't sell them all. But this is what I've had mine set up to. Generally, like, I won't bother selling them unless it's in kind of a bulk. You know, I think that's some of the complaints some people have about map selling is, that, oh, you're not really going to sell those maps. Well, no, I'm not going to sell them one at a time. I'm going to keep stockpiling them up until I have nine or more. And then if they're worth anything, really, then somebody will buy them. And people buy all different kinds. You know, I've sold at least, like, 30 different kinds of maps this season uh, in a bulk of nine. At a price like this or more at certain points um, so that's my recommendation to you if, if 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 you're not so keen on the whole map counting the maps towards the uh, final tally then i don't know what to tell you i sell the maps and people constantly ask me for promenade maps and cemetery maps which i always have maximum favored and quite often just roll the maps uh turn around and roll them myself uh yeah it's not even some crazy amount anyway like Cemetery, I had favored it all the way through. Uh, actually, I did have Promenade favored it somewhat, I think, but it's I guess it's down here. Anyway, it's, what is that? 600 Chaos there. So, uh, four Aegis Auras. I did get quite a few uniques in here. Some currency here. Four Screaming Invitations. 13 Five Delirium Orbs. Uh, Gurukhan's Flight. Two of those. They're worth a lot now these days. They've gone up in value a lot. Uh... Yeah. Two sacred orbs? That was kind of wild. A lot of stacked decks. I can't remember whether. Uh, stacked decks dropping from the Delirium Mirror Rewards. Uh, yeah, a lot of Delirium Orbs, as usual. Anyway, uh, uh, two dust there. Un uniques. L let's take a look at uh, uniques here. You see, I did get quite a few uniques. Zenith's uh, gloves, a couple void batteries, two dust. Four flesh crafters, inventors, gambler, you know, and then some of the stuff I don't really worry that much. Anything worth less than 10 chaos, probably not uh, super important. But certainly uh, the jewel, the void batteries, the Zenith, the boots, and the four shields. Those are definitely premium. Unique drops, nothing major. Certainly nothing crazy. No headhunter. Mage blood. Squire, I've never even seen that item. Uh, they could have dropped. I mean, I got tons and tons of unique belts across my loop filter uh, so uh, let's see let's quickly see here what uh, this amount to so this is kind of the floor I guess or, or not even counting some of the uh, some of the extra stuff so this is 23.3 uh, divided by 9.5 and this is uh, practically 13 X an hour However, if I count uh, all of these, I don't know, let's see if I got, if I hit anything. Nope. 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 <laughs> Did not hit any of the grasping males. Uh, this cluster right here is worth uh, 3x basically, and they got another couple clusters that were almost super good, but they're about 3.5x. In total, let's see if I hit uh, any of these enhanced supports. And survey says... Wow. Should have averaged at least one, but I didn't hit any. <laughs> well, oh uh, well. I guess I actually went one under. Well, that's sad. Doesn't usually happen. Hmm. Anyway. Those were kind of... Those were my only real potential uh, jackpot hits off of this farm, uh, including some of the things I was uh, farming. Um, average jackpot hits off of that. would I probably would have hit one of these for a uh, global defense. That would be 5x there. Hit, I don't know, even just one of these would be another 5x. Looking at an additional 10x, additional 13x, uh, probably on average uh, about what I could have expected from those. I got very unlucky on both ends. Um, not a big deal. Certainly late. Certainly not this late in the season. So just for fun, let's uh, calculate that. 
23.5 divided by 9.5 and this is probably what I would have made, yeah, 14. So, I, you know, I think 13 to 14x an hour is, uh, or, or more like, yeah, more like 12, 12 to 15. 12 to 15 X an hour, I guess, uh, is kind of in the ballpark of what I would have gotten. Yeah, actually, very much what I expected. Uh, I was expecting 12, 13, maybe 14 X an hour on this strategy, and uh, hit right in that neighborhood. However, if I were to do this again, I probably would legitimately average uh, 4 to 5 minutes per map, and that would have, you know, I mean, let, let's just see what that would have done. For example, so what uh, nine point five? I guess that would be like seven and a half. Three divided by seven and a half. That, for example, would be 16 X an hour if I did manage to do that time. But, you know, it is what it is. Um, definitely uh, definitely learned how to keep the AG alive a little better. Uh, learned how to best do these sort of medium tier juicing but challenging promenade deli mirror farms. And get in and out of the map as, about as quickly as you can. Yeah, I hope you liked uh, everything you saw there. So another decent farming video. I wasn't really sure if, if I was going to make this video, but I decided to go ahead and give it a try. Uh, give it a legitimate um, go at it. See what I could do. So yeah, 12 to 15 X an hour, I guess. Something like that. So uh, I do have in mind for an interesting next video. Path of Math came out with... Uh, I forget the name of it, but basically he he sat down and with a bunch of a uh, bunch of testers and uh, created a massive spreadsheet of x per hour or not x per hour, but just just pure currency values of certain strategies, uh, atlas passives, and kind of broke it all down into certain values. I want to actually do a kind of reaction video on that. I want to kind of share my thoughts on. It. I do have some thoughts on. I have some generalized thoughts. I kind of know what I'm going to bring up on the on the more sort of broad idea of it but uh, on the specifics I, I do actually want to take a look at it study it a little bit uh, before I post that video and I'll kind of react to it yeah that'll come out in the next week I think uh, also later on uh, going to be looking at potential new league starters in the next season uh, I'm thinking something with a soul thirst belt because I learned about the glory of shrines and the goal and how you can make a shrine effect uh, dramatically improve the power of your character and it lasts for two minutes. I already knew, uh, thanks to the content creator named Asmodeus, about, uh, you know, he, he's all about the Soul Thirst build. Uh, I seen him get his uh, flasks up to two minutes per, so two minute flask, two minute shrines, insane power for two minutes, <laughs> two minute mapping, build a strategy around that. Sounds incredible. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I know you could already do like 60% deli if you if you if you got that the way you could, you know, you could easily crush 60% deli maps in two minutes, uh, even on like day two or something, if, if you could get that set up that quickly anyway. Uh, so I'm thinking about something like that. So and one more thing is, I assuming I have the time, I do want to do a one last major cemetery farm. Take the now that my character is basically finished, uh, I can. The, there's about the only really one other thing I really want to do, and that is double corrupting a bunch of headhunters. So what I think I'll do is I'll run the cemetery farm. Uh, you know, for all the haters out there who don't like this idea of. Calculating brother stash drop RNG into a 100 map session. Well, maybe I'll just run 500 maps. Or maybe I'll run 1,000 maps. I don't know. I'll, I think maybe I'll just run enough maps to buy a mirror. <laughs> maybe. Or I'll run enough maps to double crop 8 headhunters. You know, something like that. Uh, I don't know how. I don't know exactly how I will um, showcase it or advertise it or, you know, display the video. But certainly I will do... 
surely enough runs so that even the people who are skeptical about Brother Stash RNG can't look at that and say, oh, you just got lucky with 30 Brother Stashes and 500 maps. You're just lucky. Like, oh, that, that, that's pretty well averaging out <laughs> at that point. Uh, and I know that's about how it'll go. So, uh, yeah, that'll be in the works. So, basically, we got League Start stuff at some point. We got another major cemetery farm. And we got a reaction to um, Path of Maths um, spreadsheet. And I think Path of Maths video will be the next thing I'll focus on. Look forward to it. Thank you guys for tuning in. We had a lot of viewers this past week. On the stream, uh, I've only been streaming like one, maybe two days a week. Sorry about that. Busy working. Uh, I got a major holiday coming up two weeks before, one, one and a half weeks before the league starts. So I'll be on way more. I'll definitely have plenty of time to theorycraft uh, as we get uh, closer to figuring out the patch notes and, you know, um, what kind of builds are looking to be meta for the next season. Tornado shot, Fizz. Elemental conversion. Hope it stays true. I would love to kind of have a repeat on this, but instead of being two months into the season when I get it, uh, maybe, you know, one month into the season or less even. Who knows? I'll catch you guys later. Stay tuned.